Surrey were able to do the T20 double over their rivals Middlesex this summer, but in spite of losing by nine runs at Lords, it was a much improved performance from the Panthers. Rory Hamilton-Brown won the toss and decided to have a bat first on the pitch which was used for last Sunday's international, but his side struggled to find early boundaries. Indeed, the first one didn't come until the third over, although it was quickly followed by another as both Stephen Davis and Jason Roy got their innings moving. Roy had failed to time the ball in the first few overs, but he soon worked it out and took on Ryan McLaren in his first over. He planted him over his head for a maximum, and then Davis added more fours as he also started to play some excellent strokes. 19 runs came off the fifth over. And the boundaries are coming off every ball in the sixth as it started to rain fours. Roy struck three in succession off Stephen Crook as Surrey came to the end of their power play in cracking touch. 16 more came from the sixth over with the Lions on 64 without loss. Davis came into this match on the back of a brilliant undefeated 99 in his side's win over Sussex and he was executing some tremendous shots here. Roy batted in a slightly less attractive manner but he was even more destructive. This smash brought him his second six on his way to a half century from just 35 deliveries an innings with five fours and those two sixes. Jamie Dalrymple came on in the 10th over and broke the opening partnership with his first delivery. Chris Rogers taking the catch to remove Roy for 52, just inside the long off boundary. But Surrey had 99 runs on the board at the halfway stage and Hamilton Brown was ensuring that his side kept up with the pace. Davis was in sublime form and another easy looking shot took him to his 50. This one coming from just 25 deliveries. But he fell to his next ball. He advanced down the pitch to Dalrymple and was both caught behind and stumped by John Simpson at 114 for two. Some excellent bowling from Dalrymple and Tom Smith then slowed Surrey's progress down for a while, with this boundary suddenly something of a rarity. Hamilton Brown was not going to wait too long for the big shot, though, and when he tried, Smith proved too good for him as Simpson whipped off the bails. With five overs left, the visitors had slowed down to 138 for three, but thanks to some tight bowling, they were unable to really kick on in spite of the best efforts of Tom Maynard and Xander de Brain, the South African finding every possible way to clear the field. Both batsmen also ran really well between the wickets to keep the scoreboard ticking as Surrey finished on 182 for three. Needing more than nine runs per over to win for the third time this summer, Middlesex had to get off to a good start, but they lost Paul Sterling in the very first over, courtesy of a very good catch by Stuart Meeker. Scott Newman was unlucky to go in the next over as he gloved a leg side ball from Chris Tremlett behind to leave the Panthers on 10 for two after only nine deliveries of their reply. So there was another big job for captain Neil Dexter to do as he came in to join Chris Rogers. This partnership was already a crucial one if Middlesex were going to get one over their neighbours and upset their chances of making it into the knockout stages. Rogers took on the pace of his fellow countryman Dirk Nanez to give his side some hope with an uppercut for six. But that hope was quickly extinguished when Nanez got immediate revenge by bowling Rogers for 18, the batsman playing down the wrong line. So with a wicket falling in each of the first three overs, the Panthers were on 24 for three. Dexter was becalmed to start with, but he couldn't stay that way for long. He drove Nanez through the covers to get him moving, and by the end of the six power play overs, his side had reached 43 for three, 141 more required. The spinners had slowed things down in the first inning, so Dexter had to make sure that the likes of Gareth Batty couldn't settle. He and Dalrymple had stopped the flow of wickets and were now building an innings ready for an onslaught as they picked up a bit of momentum. Dalrymple used his experience to keep the runs coming as the Panthers just started to make a decent fist of their chase. They went into the last 10 overs needing 109 runs to win but with seven wickets in hand and both batsmen decided that now was the time to attack. Dexter put Chris Schofield into the crowd as the Surrey spinners were having less of an influence on the game. That was until Dexter ran down the wicket and was beaten by a big leg spinner, allowing Davis an easy stumping job. 
Dextra gone for 49 at 98 for four to end a flourishing partnership on 74. Simpson immediately brought up the 100 and with seven overs left, the target was now 80. That was brought down to 63 off the final five as Dalrymple struck Batty for a big six, nailing the ball off the middle of his bat. Another boundary meant that the target was brought down to 52 off the last four overs. Certainly not easy, but with both batsmen in, there was a possibility. However, luck was against Middlesex. Simpson was caught on the boundary's edge off Nanes for 19, although he could feel aggrieved as the delivery was surely an illegal one, as it was on the full over waist height. Nanes is not so successful at this form of the game for no reason, and when Dalrymple flat batted him to Batty, who took the catch above his head, he was gone for 48, and with him went the Panthers' chances. It was left to Sam Robson and McLaren to try to somehow get their side over the line. They kept on going, and now 34 were needed off the last 12 balls. Another high beamer from Nanes was called as a no ball, and McLaren this time managed to get it away for four. But yet again, Nanes responded, this time by Yorking McLaren for nine, with 24 now needed off eight. And then the Australian claimed his fifth wicket against one of his former clubs, as Stephen Crook holed out next four at 159 for eight. That was remarkably the first time that Nanes has done five wickets in an innings, as he ended with figures of five for 40. 20 were wanted off the last over then, Five came off the first two balls and then Robson blasted a boundary to make all things possible. But Mika responded well and only one run came for the last three balls as Middlesex lost by nine runs. The Panthers will hope that in spite of their form in this competition that a good crowd will be at Southgate for their final home match of this campaign. That's against Somerset on Sunday.